One of the features missing from Azure SQL Database is the SQL Agent. We can't schedule jobs within SQL Azure. In one of my previous videos, I've talked about other ways within Azure that you can run scheduled tasks against an Azure SQL Database, such as Azure Automation, Scheduler Job Collection, and Web Jobs within App Services. But these require knowledge of other languages, such as Node.js, PowerShell, or C Sharp. In 2016, Microsoft added a scheduler to Azure SQL Database called Elastic Database Jobs. I produced a video on Elastic Jobs for my YouTube channel back in March 2018, but in September 2018, that version of Elastic Database Jobs was removed and replaced with a completely new version, still called Elastic Database Jobs in the documentation, but in the portal, it's called Elastic Job Agent. It works in a similar way, but is set up completely differently. And at the time of recording this, which is September 2018, it's still in preview. Now, Microsoft say Elastic Database Jobs for Azure SQL Database allow you to reliably execute T-SQL scripts that span multiple databases while automatically retrying and providing eventual completion guarantees. Now, what this means is that you can run native T-SQL scripts against an Azure SQL database. You don't need to write complex PowerShell or C-sharp code to run your scripts. More importantly, your script can be run against multiple databases in one go, and this makes it very handy for sharded databases. It will continue to retry on each database until it completes or the timeout value is reached. Despite the name, Elastic Database Jobs are not limited to running on databases with an Elastic pool. It can be set up to run against any Azure SQL database. The new version is installed using the Elastic Job Agent option within the portal, or you can use PowerShell as well. Whereas the previous version required a lot of Azure resources to be created and could only be installed from the Elastic pool in the portal, the new version just requires an Azure SQL database which Azure uses to manage the jobs and schedules. To install Elastic Database jobs, this database must be at least a standard S0 database. Anything else can't be used. Even a standard database inside an Elastic pool can't be chosen. Once created, there doesn't seem to be anything to stop you changing the power of level of that database back to basic. You can create jobs and schedules using T-SQL, but at the time of recording, there is no way to do this from the portal. In this demo, I will show you how to create the Elastic Job Agent from the portal and then use T-SQL to create and run jobs. Here I am in my Azure portal or my dashboard screen. Now, before we create an Elastic Job Agent, I'm just going to take you over to SQL Elastic Pools. And if I select my Elastic Pool, you'll see that we have two options, Create Job and Manage Jobs. Now these refer to the previous version of Elastic Database Jobs, not the current version. If you click on one of these, you will actually get a warning that this version has been deprecated and that this screen will be removed in November 2018. So do watch out if you do click on that particular option. If you're watching this after November 2018, hopefully those two items have disappeared. So let's go on to Elastic Job Agents. And here is the Elastic Job Agent screen. I don't have an Elastic Job Agent at the moment, so let's click on Create Elastic Job Agent. I need to give it a name, so let's call it Shard Pool Agent. Using my current subscription, I've already accepted the preview terms because as this is preview, you have to acknowledge that you're willing to take the risk that it may not work quite as it should do. And then we need to select our job database. Now I've already created an Azure SQL database for this, which is on my Azure SQL Server called Shard Pool Server. There's only one database on there, it's a standard S0, all the others are part of an elastic pool. So let me select that database, click OK. Now that we have selected everything we need, we can click on Create. Now that will take a few minutes to create, so I'll pause the video and we'll come back when it's completed. Right, here I am back again. That only took a couple of minutes. If I now click Refresh, we now have. Elastic Job Agent called Shard Pool Agent. If 
I click on show pool agent you can see that there aren't many options currently available in the agent we have an overview screen if we come down here we can click on jobs of which there aren't any yet target groups no target groups target groups are the the list of servers and databases that we wish to run our queries against and again there aren't any credentials so let's move over to management studio where we can start creating our, our jobs and our targets so here we are in management studio and the, here is the elastic job database which our elastic job is going to use if i click on tables you can see there's a whole series of tables that exist and views and also a whole series of store procedures and these are the things that got created during the build of our elastic job agent now the first thing we're going to need to do is we need two logins we need one login which i have called elastic job user and this account will be the one that will run our queries on all our target databases now in my case i am going to be targeting my sharded databases here shard db1 2 3 and 4 we also need a second credential which i'm calling elastic job master and this is used by the elastic agent when it's enumerating databases on your target sql servers so these accounts will need to exist on all the sql servers which are going to be targeted by the elastic agent so let's create those two logins on this sql server in my example i'm only using one sql server but you could be targeting numerous sql servers in any azure data center so now let me move down to the elastic job database and let me create the elastic job master in the elastic job database and i'm going to give it db owner because it's going to be writing tables and things later on now the elastic job agent will use credentials to connect to the different azure sql servers so we need to create some database scoped credentials and these need to exist in the elastic job db so let me create a master key a scoped credential for the elastic job user and a scoped credential for the elastic job master there we go now i need to create this login account on all my target servers and databases since i'm only using one server that login already exists but i do need to create that user account on all my sharded databases so shard db one let's create my user and i'm going to give it read and write permissions obviously the permissions that you would require will be tend will depend on the queries that you're going to be running against those databases if for example you are going to use the elastic job agent to re-index or create tables then it would need more permissions than just read and write right so that's the elastic job user created on all four of my sharded databases so now let me go back to my elastic job db database we've now created all the users and credentials now we can start creating our target groups and our jobs so first of all we need a target group now i'm just going to call it shard server group one a target group is a selection of databases that we want to run our queries on so now that we've created our target group we need to add our members we have two ways of adding members we can add a target group member as a target type of sql server and if we do this then when our elastic job runs the elastic job master account will go and enumerate the list of databases on that server and then tell the job agent the database names it needs to run the query against 
However, if you just want to run against one particular database, then we can just add a target group member of target type of SQL database. And in this case, we don't need to specify a refresh credential because it doesn't need to check whether it exists. We assume it does exist. So I'm going to add this target member, my shard DB1, to my list. I'm going to add my shard DB2 to the list. Now, if we were using the server option and we wanted to exclude a certain database, then we could use this option here, which says target type of SQL database, database name, and the membership type of exclude. But since I'm just adding databases, I don't need to do this. So let me include my final one, which is shard DB. So I now have three databases in my target group. So let me just run the query to view that. And there we can see we have shard group one, membership type of include. They're all SQL databases. That's the server name and that's the database name. Next thing we need to do is create a job. Now start off with I'm going to create a job with just a name and a description. So I'm going to call this shard job one and a description of run query on shards. Once we've created a job, we need to create a job step. So this is very similar to how we do it in our standard SQL agent. So my job step is just going to say select at app server name. And I'm going to create a job step with that command using the credential elastic job user credential and the target group name of the shard server group so we can add that in if we want to we can query the job definition by querying the job steps table so if we select that here we can see shard job is the job name command type of tsql in the future, Microsoft will be adding different command types. You'll be able to run PowerShell scripts and the like. But at the moment, we just seem to be limited to C-SQL. There's my command. There's a credential name it's going to use to connect and run that command. And it's going to run it against all the databases in shard server group 1. And to execute our job, we simply say execute shard job 1. And that's it. To view the state of our job, we can look in the job executions table. Now this little query will return the latest execution for that job. And here we go. So we can see it's run successfully. Open it up. So we can see it's run successfully on shard DB4, DB1 and DB2. And step one succeeded. But what we haven't got back is any output from my select at, at server name. Just like the previous version of Elastic Database Jobs, the only message we get back is the fact it succeeded. If there's any output from your, your query, it doesn't get recorded anywhere in any of the tables associated with Elastic Database Jobs, which is a bit of a drawback. But we do have a way of fixing that, and I will show you that next. So let me create another job, this time shard job two. And in this case, I'm going to use a few more options in the add job step. So I'm going to create a new job step, attach it to the job shard job two. But the command this time, I'm going to retrieve some counts from my sharded databases for the addresses table. Again, I'm going to use the credential called Elastic Job User Credential. Target my shard server group one. But this time I've got some new options, output type. So I'm going to output the results of my query to a SQL database. We're going to use the Elastic Job Master Credential to create that table on my shard pool server in the Elastic Job database. And the table is going to be called shard count. Now I've also added option, the option here called retry attempts. There are a whole series of options that you can use in the job step to determine how many times to retry, how long to wait for your retry. 
but I'm just going to keep it fairly simple in this demo. So let's create this job step. There we go. And now we can execute shard job 2. And there we go. Again, we can look at the latest execution to make sure it's working. And there we go, successfully run on 1, 4 and 2, succeeded, job succeeded. Now if I open up Elastic Job DB over here, go to Tables, Refresh, and we have a new table called Shard Count, and if I do a quick select the top 1000 rows from there, here we can see the output. So for my row count, my country name and the country ID, which is my query, I can see how many rows I have in each table. And that table has been created automatically by the agent job. Now it's all very well one running jobs on a ad hoc basis. What about scheduling? Well, we can update our job and add a schedule to it. So here I'm going to create two uh, variables for the start time and the end time. So the start time will be in a minute's time. In this case, I'm going to create an end time. You don't have to have an end time. It could be a never ending job, which I'm just going to put at 45 minutes to stop it running on forever. So I'm going to update my job called shard job two. I'm going to create a schedule, which is going to run every day, starting at the start time, ending at the end time. We also have an option called enabled. So if you need to disable your job at any time, then you can obviously update it and just specify the enabled. And if I specify that, there we go. And if we now wait a minute or so, we will see whether we have a new successful job run and some more results in our shard count table. So let me pause the video and I'll let you know in a moment. So here we are a minute later. If I run this query to view the last execution, and I've added the start time now to the query as well, you'll see that we have an execution time of 11.05, which is about a minute ago. If we have a look at the shard count table, we can see that it is added in another set of rows so before we had Romania down to France and here's another set of remote rows Romania down to France we can see that that scheduled job has run at the time that we specified let's go back to the portal and let's have a look at our shard port agent so let me click overview and now you can see that I have three runs listed here the last three runs execution we can also see our jobs shard job 2 and shard job 1 and you can see that shard job 2 is a recurring job and that shard job 1 was just run once so now it's become disabled we can see our target groups so there's the shard group 1 that doesn't actually show us the databases which are in it which is a bit of a shame and we can also see our credentials all these options are read only at the moment. I hope by the time that this stops being previewed that you'll be able to rerun and configure jobs within the agent. But at the moment, we have to configure them using T-SQL and eventually you'll be able to use PowerShell to configure them as well. Well, I hope this has been a useful introduction to, into Elastic Database Jobs. Everything in this session will be included in the fifth edition of my free ebook which will be published later in 2018. And you can get this free by signing up on gethanellis.com. You can view more of my videos on Azure and SQL Database on my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a comment and let me know, because it's always useful to know if I'm being helpful to the SQL Server community. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you very much.